Hello, folks. Thank you for tuning in to the Believe It Show, where believe it. If I can get through this day with a big smile on my face and true personal independence, just a baby step away. Well, believe it, so can you. Today is Friday, April 24th, 2020. I am broadcasting from the south side of Jacksonville. A little bit of sexy down here. And I gotta tell you what, folks. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, share it with your friends. I promise you that I am going to start putting out some great shows that are going to be packed with information that you are going to love. Now, let's get on with the show, and I am looking at you. Staring down, what's the, what's the score? It's all tied, you want more, you know it's true, what's inside of you, believe it don't you know, talk the talk, walk the walk, believe in the believe it show. Independence Day, a baby step away. Believe it, it's time to go. Believe it, Joe. Hey, folks, I'm getting a little bit better at the piano. Not too much, but a little bit. And I got to tell you, that's what our show is going to be about today. Just things that you can do to get your dexterity back. Because I'll tell you what, this left hand, it's not like it used to be. I'm left-handed, and I have a time trying to write. You know, I used to play guitar. Um, I don't do that much anymore, ever. As a matter of fact, it's just, I can't even hold... A pick in my hand. However, what I can do is practice a little bit of of piano. And and you know, I'm willing to bet that this is good for you if you just do it every day a little bit at a time. I'm definitely not in the category of being a professional piano player or anything like that. But it's just really good for the dexterity and the strength in your fingers and the grace that you need to perform your daily tasks like buttoning clothes and things of that nature. So I would suggest doing something like that, playing an instrument or a piano, or even a keyboard, or something like that. It'll be very helpful to you. And I've got to tell you that I, uh, I have been working out quite a bit. Walking, getting better with my walking a little stronger. As a matter of fact, yesterday while I was walking, I picked my wheel, my uh, walker up. And was walking, and you know, I'd fall off balance, but I had my walker to, to brace my fall. Be very careful when you do that because you can certainly fall over and hurt yourself. And that's what I'd like to avoid is getting hurt like that. That's not no bueno. And another thing that you should do is march in place as a good exercise. That's where you just pick your knees up while you're standing in place. What I would do is use your walker and have something behind you, like a, your bed or couch, so if you do fall backwards, you fall somewhere soft. Okay, so that's very important that if you do lose your balance, you have a safe place to fall. 
So make sure to do that for you. Because the number one thing is keeping yourself safe so that you can recover. Okay? And hopefully, um, unlike myself, you have insurance and can afford to have uh, therapy and all the necessary things to get you to where you need to be. Little by little. Just a little bit at a time. And that's what we do here. We just get better. I noticed that about this condition. The recovery process is very slow. And that's okay, folks. One thing I want to do is go over the eight steps to stroke recovery that I have decided that I'm going to use for my listeners and and it's very simple the first step is to have a plan to have some goals in mind and then the second step is to write those goals down write your plan down if you don't have any if you can't write like myself use a app to type it in with your fingers it's very simple to do that number three is to surpass your goals each day. Set your goals so that they are passable. Don't set lofty goals. Set goals that you know you can achieve and that you know that you'll be able to surpass. Number four is to have fun. Do something interesting with your 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 goals. Like right now I'm playing piano. It's very cool. And um, when you're walking... Maybe uh, sing a little bit or, or, you know, recite something at the same time. And what this does is it sharpens your memory so that you can do the number five, and that is memorize something. Okay, and, and you memorize a song, a poem, some kind of quote, jokes, there's several things you can memorize. Now, one thing that I'm memorizing is these eight steps. And I've got to tell you that that's not easy. Sometimes you make mistakes and it's okay to fail. And that's step number seven. Number six is to have a good diet. It's to, you know, look on Google, type in, Food's good for your brain, and you'll come up with several great ideas for that. I've gone over those before, so I'm not going to waste too much of your time to do that. If you'd like to to view those, just go back and see my old shows. Number seven is not to beat yourself up. If you cannot exceed your goals or even make your goals, please... It's not. It's okay to do that. You're not going to have your A game all the time. And the sooner that you're okay with that, the better off you're going to be able to face your day. Number eight is to get plenty of rest. While you're working out even, if you start getting tired, sit down, take a break. It's very important. Make sure to breathe through your nose and out your mouth. And take it easy. Do not overdo it. That's one thing that this condition will it'll slap you hard if you overdo it. So, folks, I hope that is good for you to, to get in tune with your uh, eight steps of recovery. Hopefully, hopefully I've been a help to you. I'm going to go ahead and and uh, say goodbye to you for the day. I hope each and every one of you has having wonder day, under wonderful day of recovery, and are putting in your your best effort. Remember, give it all you have. However, if you can't do it, then it's okay. Don't don't uh, beat yourself up. That's step number seven. And I got to tell you, sometimes I don't remember things right, so I get the steps wrong, or the Bible verse I might read is wrong, and it's okay to, to make mistakes. So, 
With that said, I am going to read a Bible verse. That's one thing that I want to do for you every 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 show is read a Bible verse because I think having a higher power that a faith belief system is very important. This is my mother's Bible. And my mother loved the Lord very much. So I totally when I open this Bible and see all the notes and things that she did in here, it really brings me back to her. And I'm going to read Psalm 24, verse 3, 4, and 5. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. I'm sorry, there were just three, four, five I'm not going to read. But that's it. I'm going to read it one more time for you. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. This, I read it because my mother underlined this. This is Psalm 24, verse 3, 4. And, and that's what I'm going to give you folks for the day. I'll tell you what, I really enjoy speaking with you. I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful day. And if I have reached just one individual and had a positive influence on your life, well, guess what? I have done my job. And with that said, believe it. If I can get to this day with a big smile on my face and true personal independence, just a baby step away. Well, believe it, so can you. Folks, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment in the comment section on the bottom. And I'll speak with you next time. You have a great evening. Bye-bye.